I'm Andrew Enser, owner of Orchid Designs LLC, and here we have the Orchid Designs electric spinning wheel. So, here we see it, fully uh, put together, but not uh, hooked up for use yet. So it can be carried around in this mode. The uh, flyer there acts as a handle very nicely. So to show the setup here, we'll go ahead and pop this open in the back and open that. And then lift this out gently and slide this way towards the rear and it just lifts right out. And then the bobbin comes off like so. Alright, and on the inside here, turn around so you can see here, it opens up like so. And then inside you will find your uh, power supply, the bobbin brake, the drive band, and the orifice hook, also known as a yarn hook. And then we'll close that back up. We are done with that for now. Now for setup. So here we have the flyer and the drive band. And there are a couple ways of doing this. Um, one way is to wrap the drive band around there and then hook it around the drive wheel coming off the motor. And then hook this into the main orifice and it just pops down like so. Or we can set this in place with this looped over it. And then just with both hands, pull down gently and hook the drive band around the drive wheel down below. There we go. So either way it works. But you'll notice that we uh, did not put a bobbin on, so let's put a bobbin on now. So one way to, there's a couple ways to get this off as well. Um, one way is to just unhook it. That works. Uh, or you can pull it straight out and unhook it. Or another way to remove this, uh, which I find works really well when you're uh, trying to just leave it in place and not remove the whole thing is you just press this gently here and just rotate and it'll pop off the wheel down below just like that. Okay, so let's pull this back out, put our bobbin on, hook our drive band, and put in place. Alright, so here I'm going to hook the drive band back up to the drive wheel down below. Alright, and then lock in place. Go. Okay, so for the bobbin brake, <clears throat> just hook one end of this spring around that hook like so. Flip it up over the bobbin, through this hook, wrap around here once, and then just pull the knot underneath the knob. If it's not going under the knob, you can just unscrew this a little bit higher so there's room for that loop to hook under the knob and then just screw back down to hold it in place. Now if you want to tighten or loosen this at any point, it's pretty simple with just loosening this a little bit and there's plenty of slack there now. Okay, so now we're going to hook up the power supply. Comes in two pieces in order to fit inside the box, so we plug this end into here. This end into the back like so. And then we just plug it in. Okay, we are all plugged in now. All right, so getting started, I'll take a piece of yarn. I don't have any that I have spun uh, handy, so I'm going to just take a regular piece of yarn, wrap it around the bobbin, and tie it off. It doesn't really matter what kind of knot you use, but if uh, you have a specific knot you like to use or any recommendation, I just use a nice simple square knot or granny knot to hold it in place. It doesn't have to be permanent. And then you hook that through the yarn guide, through the other yarn guide. And then I will do this sideways so you can see what's happening here. <clears throat> so looped around through the yarn guide, through the other yarn guide, and then across here. And this is nice and easy to load because it's so very wide, I don't really have to worry about it. I can just pull it through. <clears throat> and this folds back up for easy storage. <clears throat> okay, so now we are all prepped and ready. Now it is time to get going with the actual spinning. So let me get some roving here. I have some handy. Okay, so here we have our roving. Get it all a little ready. I mean, uh, depending on how the thickness of the yarn you're going for, you will use a different thickness or amount of uh, 
building, which is just combed uh, sheep's wool. At least this is anyway. Um, doesn't mean you can't use it with any other kind of wool, like, uh, like uh, alpaca, uh, llama wool, or uh, I've heard of even people spinning with uh, dog hair that's uh, appropriately the right length and uh, thickness and so on and so forth. So pretty versatile stuff. <clears throat> so getting started, we are going to want to pinch onto this yarn, but we want to get it going a little first. Control the speed with this knob here. I'm going to pull back against the yarn to make sure that uh, it's not going to uh, suck it up in there. And once we're pinched on, it's pretty simple to get going, I find. I'm not very good at this yet. I'm still a beginner, so please bear with me. If you want to let it wind on, you can just do that. Just let it go up there gently. And so pulling back on it is... Uh, you get it. Uh, if you need to stop for a second, just quickly turn it off, and then you can pull it out and loosen it up as you need to. I do that quite a bit at this point in time. Um, I am working on a foot pedal that will allow me to just turn the machine off and on without having to use this because, let's admit it, when you're using your hands, it's kind of a pain to have to do this every time. But for the price and for the, for the ease of electronics and making it work all perfectly, this works really well. I don't have any problems. So in the future, that might be an issue that we can uh, address and upgrade. But at the moment, it works beautifully as is, I find. So I notice I'm getting a little bit of a uh, twist here. So I'm just going to pull that out real quick. Still figuring this out. Let's take a quick break.